So in the meantime, uh, had the had the defendant's van been looked at? Yes, yeah, so overnight um, when officers responded to Mequon, um, the van had been looked at. In the meantime, had the defendant been interviewed? Yes, the defendant was interviewed. Not, I guess it was kind of simultaneous with the search warrant going on. Is that what you, or you mean afterwards? You had gained what it, you get. You had gained information from the defendant. Yes. Okay. Before you made that decision. Yes. You had seen and looked in the van. Yes. Okay. Um, and you've heard testimony about the condition of the van. Officers knew about the condition of the van. Correct. Okay. Um, and uh, you had uh, witnesses who had described circumstances to you. Correct. Yes. And then at that point, uh, you either had to search a dump site locally or you had to make a decision that um, that a van had, had likely been involved in transport. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. Okay. Uh, ultimately, you've indicated that um, a search warrant uh, was conducted at the Mequon residence. So I, I think that's been previously testified to as 6813 West Highland Road. Is that right? Yes. And did, uh, did the original search warrant on that occur on May 19th? Yes. Okay. Uh, and if you know, how many officers were involved in that initial search? Only if you know. I do not know because there were um, a number of officers from our agency as well as um, the Mequon Police Department. Uh, and then uh, was an additional, were, were additional searches done the next day on the 20th of May at the defendant's residence? Yes, so the initial search warrant... Um, So the initial search warrant that we um, conducted was for evidence related to a, a possible stalking. So we were looking a lot for um, GPS trackers, uh, electronic device, things that would be kind of related to the um, information that uh, Ms. Beecham had, had provided to us. Once the officers executed that search warrant, they were they had determined that there was a, a van that was found at, at the residence, and then within that van, they discovered that there were apparent bleach spots, um, that the vehicle had smelled like bleach, there was carpet ripped out, and from what they observed, possible um, apparent blood um, droplets. So that was the, the initial warrant that night. Once we were able to reconvene the, the next morning, or the next morning, because of the possibility of the connection between the missing person case that we initially investigated, and the possibility of the van then being involved. We wrote a secondary search warrant under that case. So did Kenosha police officers then go back on the 20th again? We did. And uh, are, are you aware of how many officers were involved in that particular uh, uh, exploration in Mequon? I, I would say maybe around a dozen again. Again, there were officers from at that time, there were officers from the Kenosha Police Department, Mequon Police Department, I believe the Ozaki County Sheriff's Office, um, and then um, from the, I believe, Madison Police Department, or, or Dane County, Madison or Dane County. So you had multiple agencies? Yes. Okay, and this is on the 20th? Yes. All right. And um, what... Uh, other than the, the fact that several agencies were there, so so again, all told, how many officers were you there? Apologize. I was there. Change, yes. Change the uh, question right in the middle. Um, what would be your estimate on how many officers were involved in the in some way on the, in the search on the twentieth? Maybe fifteen. And um, other than just manpower, were there other resources being used, mechanical or any other type of resource? Yes, yeah, so the Ozaki County Sheriff's Department provided a drone, um, which they were able to kind of fly over the, the area. The property itself is roughly around four acres, I believe, and then it's surrounded by, um, I believe there's a residence to the, to the west. There's a lot of, I guess I would consider it a marsh area to the south, and then there's also like a, a marsh um, or high tall grass to the, to the east. Um, of the residents. Um, so we used the drone to kind of do a, a full over overview of the place. Um, a cadaver dog was brought at the time as well. Um, at some point, 
there we had to, well, we contacted um, Agent Hamro from the Wisconsin um, Division of Criminal Investigations um, regarding his arson expertise. Um, and then the fire department had to come because the fire pit that was still smoldering, so the fire department as well. Was it still raining on the 20th when you arrived on, for that search warrant? It did not. Okay. And had it been raining on the 19th? I don't recall if it was raining in Mequon on the 19th. I, I wasn't up there, so I, I can't sure. say for certain. Uh, what about was it raining um, at the scene in Kenosha when you arrived at the scene, if you recall? Yes, it was raining, but it wasn't a, a hard rain. Had it been harder in the days previous? Yes. Okay, and you know that from, from working in Kenosha? Yes. Okay. Um, so uh, at that Highland Road Mequon address, um, you, did you see a picture that was uh, shown, I think, to uh, uh, Detective Anschutz that had uh, uh, garbage bags alongside a barn-like structure? Did you see that picture? Yes. And uh, when that picture was put up, did you uh, know information regarding uh, what, was, uh, what were the contents of those bags? Basically? Yes. Okay. I, what, are, what was in there? I recall actually looking at the bags, and there was a large amount of potting soil inside of them. And so uh, you're, you've heard testimony there was a marijuana grow at the residence, right? Yes. Uh, when you were inside the place, the marijuana plants were no longer growing, correct? No, there were no plants. Okay. <clears throat> you, you're aware... Judge, I guess, I'm, I guess I'm going to object to the, where the line of questioning is going unless the state's offering to use Detective Correa as, I guess, an intent expert or a, some sort of expert based on his experience in that field. And if that's so, then just I would ask that some foundation be laid. I, I'm not asking for intent of anything, Judge. My uh, argument is that uh, to grow 72 marijuana plants, you need a lot of soil. And well, do these bags constitute a lot of soil? That's, that's an argument. And whether this witness has any knowledge of that then is foundationary. I, uh, I, I don't think his ability, uh, the foundational ability for him to answer has been established. Did you see a lot of bags of soil? Yes. And were those bags of soil, uh, what the contents were of the bags that were along the barn shown in exhibit, in defense exhibit 76? I'm sorry, can you ask it? Oh, maybe it is. That's the house? Barn. I guess I'll show you what's from Marsha State's exhibit 76. It's defense exhibit 76. Did I, what did I say, State? Defense. Oh. Defense exhibit 76. Do you recall that exhibit being shown? Yes. You see bags in that? Yes. Okay. Do you know from your time at the residence what the structure is that's behind it? I, don't, I, I assumed it was a barn, but is it a house? No, that's the that's a barn that is okay. to the this in the backyard area, and then it would be to the west. Are those the bags you've just testified were soil? Yes. Uh, did the drone uh, uh, reveal anything that caused you to have to investigate further? No, we... No. Okay. Did the cadaver dogs hit on anything? Objection. That, hold on, can I finish the, the question? No, no, because then it's argumentative and we've had a prior ruling on this issue. We have. Um, the objection is sustained. To the entire topic, Judge? Well, I, uh, Because it... it it's about what he does, so I'm just trying to figure out how to... It, uh, we're going to take about a 10-minute break. Please don't talk about the case during the break.